Okay, we'll do a little uh, rant video here today. Um, <clears throat> you know, I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube of guys modding these saws. And we're seeing what a certain style of build uh, that they're not really lasting. I mean, if you build one of these things as a work saw, you should get a lot of life out of it. You know, you should get more than 100 hours or 200 hours out of it. You just should. I mean, you should get to the point where um, you start getting down on compression, take it apart, put a new set of rings in there, and check the piston. And then if you, then you can run that again, put out another whatever how many hours. And it's all very, I mean, if you suck uh, uh, sawdust through it or if you maintain it, it's all variable. But assuming you're doing your maintenance, they should last a lot longer than that. And then we have guys, we're seeing videos where apparently a guy bought a saw from one of these uh, YouTube gurus, gurus, excuse me, and... He ran it alongside of a couple other saws. There's one ported by this guy, ported by that guy, ported by the guru here, um, and a couple of stock saws. One stock saw and then one stock saw with an iron horse pipe. And the saw didn't even uh, keep up with the stock one. I don't know. I mean... Uh, Every saw I've ever built, has, I've increased the power on. You know, I've, I've, I've been playing around with these bikes since I was eight years old. Dirt bikes, I've had snowmobiles, quads, motorcycles, whatever. So, you know, I have a lot of life ex I was a machinist, worked as a machinist. I'm in skilled trades. Uh, I've got college behind me. So I have a background. It's not like, you know, you know, you're just walking into this saw at 50 years old. No, I have a whole lifetime of experience. Do I know everything? No, nobody does. But do I not know enough to, to build a saw that's going to last? Yeah. And get good get good power, last and get good fuel economy? Yes. I can I can state that I can do that. And I and barring some mechanical failure, I mean, occasionally even an OEM part fails. But how, how often is that? Not very often. But, you know, watching watching all the, the stuff I see, I, I, I'm just curious that maybe perhaps some of these guys are overbuilding these saws. I mean, you should get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours out of this thing if you take care of it. And I'm talking about when you're done, take off the air filter, clean it when it needs to be replaced, clean it off, get all the crap out of there, you know, just do your maintenance, uh, grease the sprocket, everything. You should get hundreds and hundreds of hours out of these things, not, you know, uh, 100, 150 hours or the saw is slower than stock. I mean, I, I don't know how anybody in good conscience could do that. Myself, personally, if, if someone asked me, Hey, build me one of your 562 XPs, okay? You know, and I, he says he wants just a good work saw. All right, 20, 25% gains. It's not leaving the, the house and going into the box until it gets those gains. So how somebody even built a saw and shipped this to somebody, I, I don't even know. I mean, it's, it's to me, uh, to me, that's, that's uh, very poor behavior. And you know what? I'm not, like I said, I'm not the saw police or nothing. But if that's the, if that's how the guy's running his operation, he's building saws for people that are running slower than stock and charging him money. And then, you know, I saw some stuff on Facebook. And I'm not going to go into it, but it seems like there's a pattern going. And what I'm saying is it'll take care of itself. So... To the man in question, if you're building shit, it's going to catch up with you and people are just going to tell you, hey, you know, fuck you, dude. I'm, I'm not buying this junk. It's garbage. But uh, <clears throat> there's also some talk about uh, oil 
You know, and I get a kick out of the oil. I mean, I... <laughs> Like I said, I've been playing around with these things a lo longer than this guy's even been alive. Because I'm probably about 10, 15 years older than this, this guy. Okay? But, uh, you know, it always kills me with the oil. You know, guys, there's nothing wrong with following what it says in the operator's manual. The Husqvarna recommends you burn their canned fuel. The steel recommends... You uh, burn their moto mix. If you do, that's not available, they recommend XP, which you know gets as bad of a rap as this as this stuff here. Now, is it because of the oil? I don't think so, because I've been using this oil since day one, and the moto mix. I mean, this this oil is actually what's blended with moto mix, the alkali fuel, and I have had no problem. And anybody that's dealt with me has had no problem with that or running this in their in their <coughs> non ethanol gas. Although I would say the alkali fuel is going to burn the best for you. You know, a lot of guys are turned off because of the price. But you know, these guys are crying about. There's nothing wrong with this oil. Just because you know Johnny Shine, uh, <clears throat> I'll call him STS, STS slower than stock. <laughs> That's what I'm going to refer to you now as, STS. Just because STS, slower than stock, says this oil is no good, and that his buddy, who is a, you know, quote-unquote professional mechanic, now I've checked out his channel, okay, <clears throat> and maybe he's taken saws apart that, you know, uh, were run on this particular oil, and there was a problem. But... To be honest with you, in my experience of years, we're coming on uh, over 10 years running the moto mix, and then when I'm doing a lot of work, you know, I'll mix up uh, some non ethanol, maybe two, three, four, five gallons, because I'm going to burn it all. That's the other thing. You got this shit biodegrades in 18 days. So you mix up fuel, I'd use it within a month, 20 days or whatever. But you've got guys that have used this uh, this product, made by Castrol, blended in the USA. I mean, it even says right here on the back. Where Where is it right here? See, Virginia Beach. It'll say right here. A little edumacation for you, bud. Yeah, right there it says blended in USA. Okay? Now, this oil... Is Castrol. And it's blended and packaged and sold for steel by Omni Specialty Blends down in Shreveport, Louisiana. Guys, look at any two stroke oil that's synthetic is going to work for you. Made for a chainsaw. And this is not 1970. It's 2024. Okay? And this is not a NASCAR engine. It's a chainsaw. But you wonder, is it really the oil? Because you see these guys, you know, like STS and his buddy, uh, the, the, the uh, guru or whatever. Well, they're both gurus. The, the professional mechanic. And I'm wondering if it's because they're seeing failures is because of the mods. In other words, they're doing high compression, um, widening ports, squaring uh, ports off, and doing all kinds of uh, things that are probably not conducive to a work saw if you want long life out of it. And is that the problem, rather than the oil itself? Uh, Buck and Billy Ray, he's been using this for, and over in uh, Canada, I think it's it says on there, made by Castrol. And then he has um, um, 
a white bottle. But it's basically the same stuff. And he's been using it for 25 years. So, I mean, you know, there's a certain insular community. And that insular community wants to sell you modified chainsaws. And because of that, a lot of the integrity, honesty, it's all thrown out the window. We're going to build the saw to a certain amount of numbers. We want to make the saw do this by doing this. We know they run pretty good. I mean, I'd say closer to a get-together saw than a work saw, but whatever. And then a couple months later, the customer the saw blows up. Like I said, it's your saw and your nickel. You do do what you want to do.